against the Witcher. Why? A man of action, a man of valor. Are you not? Would you dare to challenge still for waters? Come on. Come here. Shall you face off against still waters? Shall you? Shall you? Uh First of all, what's going on here? Like to know who I'm punching. This knight won't reveal his name or face. Won't say anything at all, not a word. Rein in your curiosity, sir. A knightly vow is no idle promise. Still waters shall conceal both face and crest until such time as one defeats him. So, I see. Can you fight or not? Um, sure. Uh, where to a hundred? I challenge you to a duel. Mm -hmm. What? Noble lords and virtuous ladies, another fight is soon to begin. All right. <clears throat> Let's do this. Whoa! A little bit aggressive, aren't we? Oh, oof. Careful now. Don't punch the audience. Come on. Come on. Let's end this. Get out of here. Ladies and gentlemen. The Witcher defeats the previously invincible Stillwaters, and what about it was? Freed of his vow, the knight can now show his face. Your blows are strong and true. My congratulations. Thanks. Thanks. Have you naught to add? I'm a woman. No wry remarks? What for? No. It's the 13th century. Nothing peculiar about it. Women own taverns, run farms, and fight. Will you not claim there was no honor in fighting a wench? No. I'd expect to hear that from someone who was afraid to lose to a woman. Youth Colossus and Mancombe left to face. With that duo defeated, you can seek out the maestro. Look for Colossus in the largest courtyard you can find in San Sebastian. While Mancombe, you will find wandering about the docks south of Oatville. All right, I'll I'll get right on that. The North. Do you wish to jump in? Considering it. So you're not surprised. Consider this as well. Uh. Here, intellect counts as much as strength. You see, is that so? Mancombe is no ordinary fighter. Is that so? Mancombe? First I've ever encountered that name. One should never judge an opponent by his name. Master Mancombe is a saddler, though a valiant one at that. His blows are as fierce as his riposts are sharp. Is that so? Alright. Well, you can... Uh, count me in. Fine. Let's start. Oh, my knees quake like a carnival rattle. Let's get on with this ridiculous battle. I'm a top taunter, the best around, not one to be beaten by some inbred hound. Your taunts? I've heard dogs wretch things more profound. Hear how pathetic and stupid you sound. Well, how then is this for a clever tongue twister? You're a bum-butching, black and bile-filled blister. Think you're confused. That sounds more like your sister. I'm immune to disease, but even I'd die if I kissed her. You aren't worthy to empty my sister's bedpan, you mange-ridden mutant, not even a man. Oh, yeah? Should have quit before we began. Gonna make you wish you'd turn tail and ran. Why, you... bad... Uh-huh. Uh uh, I've got to admit, you know how to roast a man. You win. Mean we're not gonna fight? I win? Why? I told you, you've won. 
The Witcher oh. wins, beating Mancombe at his own game. All right. You out-tongued me, but only because I'm under the weather today. I'd have lashed you raw otherwise. Right. Right. Sure. I have no doubt. You've one opponent left, but what a foe he is! Colossus! The fastest fighter around! Find him in San Sebastian. Look for the largest courtyard in the district. Beat him, and you may face the Maestro. Oh, the Maestro. Alright. Oh, now you look to be a man in search of exertion. Hey, White Locks, will you dare to fight Colossus? Um Colossus. Interesting as monikers go. Or is that what his mother called him out of the womb, too? Why would she not have? Colossus. It rings out with pride and passion. So, will you fight? Sure. Always ready to fight. Fine. Let's fight. Ah, boring. I'm not oh. interested. Quick I am. Too quick for you. It'll be oh, yeah? patty whack. Kiss your arm bone. Where's the sport in it? Don't want to fight? Why bother looking for challengers then? Wasting my time. Whoa, a bit testy, are we? A witcher, right? <sighs> That's Let's right. Like this. You parry three blows, I throw your way, you win. But you can't huh. swing at me. Not once. Just deflect my blows, got it? Catch three of them, and I'll toss you double your wager. Feeling that generous? No, I just know you can't do it. No one's ever really? done it. Too fast, see? So, willing to try for three blocks? You're on. Fine. Doubt I'll have any trouble deflecting a few blows. That I get. At long last, one with a sportsman's soul. Now, listen. The rules say you're not to start your parry until I've cocked my fist. Standing with your guard ups, not allowed. Yeah, I know what a parry hey, is. Witness a most peculiar fight. How shall I say this? The Witcher has accepted a colossal challenge. Let's do this. You, huh? Come on. And you're done. Incredible. The Witcher has parried Colossus's blows. No one's ever managed that feat. Here's your due. Thanks. Thanks. You've earned my esteem, sir. We've not seen such a feat in years. And thus, you've secured the right to challenge the Maestro himself. You'll find him by the docks. All right. Time to meet the maestro. This where I find the boxer they call the maestro. Maestro, champ, the undefeated. Folk call him many things. You are the Witcher who dropped the three lesser champions. I am. That's all right. Come to fight the maestro, but seems to me he's indisposed. Alcohol is the maestro's remedy for his crippling shyness. He's a delicate man, you see? He'd never so much as hit a pillow while sober. I see. Fighting sober is like dancing to silence. Right. So... Forget fighting. Sure you can stand? You're blind drunk. Not your sure bum-bopping business. Ah, you cheat, you chat, while my vodka's gone flat. Will you fight, yay or nay? Sure, why not? Let's go. I challenge you. Hold on. Whoa. I'm a man of principle. I keep to a code. I don't tinkle where I eat, and I don't fight folk who don't drink. Meaning? Meaning you're to drink. Or hey, diddle diddle out of here. All right, you're on. I'll drink to my success and my status as champion of Tucson. Sheesh. Fine. 
Mesdames, messieurs, the maestro will perform at last. Oh. <sighs> All right. Let's do this. You're just gonna stand there and gonna fight. Not happened in years. Your fists, they're glorious. Thanks. Oops. I'm gobsmacked, I am. I have to drink it off. Oh, good fight. To speak through, I'm pleased you stripped me of the title. I shall have more time to pursue my chief interest now. Witcher Geralt of Rivia! Is hereby crowned Fisticus champion of Beauclair. Bravo! <laughs> Behold your trophy. Oh. Nice. A life without liquors like loving without licking. Uh huh. I'll leave it to then, shall I? <clears throat> um what the hell greetings Geralt there you are so our painting are you pleased is it to your liking do tell <sighs> well um you know not really... Mm. Not exactly what I imagined. I believe I posed with all my clothes on. Clearly remember that in fact. Some other details are off too. Invalid as a criticism. I depicted you in a more flattering state. The painting has drawn crowds. Right. Aroused a great deal of interest. Can see that. Anyway, some advice for the future. Warn your subjects about your intentions. Your next model might not be so forgiving. You don't like it. I'm hurt. Perhaps you'd care to buy the painting. Uh, Given our rapport, I shall take a loss. For you, I'll part with it, I will, at a special price. Well, if it means that no one else will be seeing it. Why not? It'll make an interesting memento. Though I'd hardly call the price a bargain. <laughs> Indeed. Few have the sophistication to appreciate my technique. I sometimes go hungry as a consequence. Mm. Yeah. Right. At least this way I'll be able to control who sees it. Thanks. Exactly. Give it here. All right. What do we have here? Signs of a fight. Paw prints, beastly ones, that's clear. Just on this spot, though. Hmm. Aerial attack. Must have been. Hmm. A griffin, maybe? Man. Bled to death. Big beast inflicted these wounds. Clear from the claw marks. Must have a toothy smile, too, judging by what ripped his throat open. A toothy... Dracanid. Gotta be. Maybe a basilisk? Except these prints don't belong to any variety I know. Just a little different. Hmm. Uh... Well, could it be... Oh. What the? Area's dangerous. 
I'd say there's a basilisk nesting around here. It'd be wise to remain at some distance. Yes, I'm familiar with the matter, and quite proud to say a basilisk does nest here. I look after it personally. Look after it? What? It's not exactly a pet. Beasts murdering folk who come through here. Just a minute. It does not murder those who do not trespass upon its territory. You post those warnings? Indeed. To prevent anyone from coming to any harm. Well, a lot of good they did. Got a freshly mangled corpse right here. Most likely a merchant, the poor bloke. Just today, I learned two traders had chosen this route despite the signs. I came as quick as I could to warn them. Too late, alas. I've instructed my servants. They shall take the body, return it to the family with a generous sum as recompense. So who are you? Who exactly are you? And how do you develop such an interest in the beast? Count Borges. Happy to be of service. As to the beast, well, this subspecies is our dynastic symbol. The Desalfareses have for centuries signed with the Regulus Platinum. As family right. legend has it, a female of the species rescued an ancestor, a boy at the time, from a burning building. She took the tyke back to her nest, where she fed him as if he were one of her own youngsters. Malarkey. Really? Sure. But beautiful malarkey it is. I see. So... Claim this to be the last surviving basilisk? How do you figure? The last of this subspecies. Their population was much larger at one time, see? Before the beech forests were felled. Mean to suggest a direct correlation between beechwood forest density and basilisk populations? Indirect, I prefer to contend. Beechwood forests are the chief habitat of roe deer, you see. In turn, a staple of the basilisk diet. When roe deer grew scarce, basilisks made humans their staple food. Enter the witchers. And thus, we've come to this one last specimen. It's a female. As recently as last year, we still had two. But your cast's mate passed on, alas. Your cast? Should she not have a name? My father dubbed her in honor of my dear departed mother. Your cast was brooding then. Two eggs that she cast from her nest, alas, when the male perished. Oh. So, uh. Hmm. Pay the victim's family's compensation? Why? These lands have been my family's for decades, granted to us by Duchess Ademarta. Beyond them, the basilisk ventures not, hunts not, it does not kill or destroy. Provided it is not provoked. Yet if it does destroy, if it kills, I compensate all for their loss from my own coffers. Hmm, your coffers. Got a store of sons and husbands in there to compensate for those shredded by your beast? Naturally, I cannot revive the dead. But I do make generous restitution to their loved ones. Just last summer, I paid a leather tooler's widow 800 crowns. This unfortunate merchant's family huh. to be duly indemnified as well. I see. Where's the basilisk nesting? Any idea? Of course I have an idea. But you don't really expect me to tell you. Those are not toy swords. I know your intentions. Find it myself then. Easy to track with its distinct paw prints. Mentioned two merchants. So I might also look for the other corpse. Yeah. <clears throat> All right then. Beware the white terror. Hmm. I see. Yes, the white terror. So it's a some sort of rare, unique. White female basilisk. Okay. So, I guess we just gotta look for the second victim. Should be somewhere around here. Oh. Basilisk scales are usually thicker, not nearly so fine. Could be more.
more sensitive to fire this one. Alas, it is true. Your cast has a terrible fear of fire. She's a highly sensitive creature. Rid your mind of any thought to kill her. You would destroy the last of a species. Strange. These burn marks. Beast venom make them? Subspecies must be highly toxic. It is so indeed. A wound from a sterling basilisk festers long. Need to brew a potion that'll neutralize that. Alright, yeah. It's probably worth noting. Um, is there anything up here? No, just just a bunch of loot. More loot. Uh, uh, um, oh, maybe over here? No, this is where I came from, right? Or, I do oh. Busted barrels, contents spilled all over. Must have been tannin in there, used to treat leather. Beast smashed the barrels, that's how the scent got on the scale. Yo Coco is so very curious. Strong scents especially intrigue her. The barrels, they must have drawn her in. Drawn her to the caravan. Busted barrels slimed with venom. Hallmarks of an attack. Basilisk must have caught the second victim here. Anyway, got two scents. Venom and tannin. Ought to be enough to track the beast. Why track her at all? Your cast is protected. Her death would forever destabilize the ecosystem. Who knows what would happen? I see unforeseeable consequences down the line. Simply refrain from provoking her. Harm her not, and she too will leave you untouched. I've long suspected they do it on purpose. Sent their goods. They seek to lure the Basilisk to destroy their wares. It allows them to demand compensation from their assurers. Right, right. Um, okay, so... Oh, there we go. Caught the scent. Excuse me. Odors dispersed. Seems to be everywhere. Basilisk must be high in the sky. Oh. Careful there. Blood stains. Clear as day. Hey man, this isn't a field trip. You can't just follow me around. I'm trying to do a professional job here. Sense perceptible again. Oh. Oh, what do we have here? Just as I expected. Second victim, but relatively unscathed. Basilisk must have been dragging him back to its nest for later. Dropped him for some reason. Wonder why. Hmm. Could have gotten attacked. Dear Gaston, in reply to your question regarding the planned transport route for the Barrels of Tannin, allow me to confirm. The official itinerary, itinerary supported by the guild still goes through the lands belonging to Count de Salvares. The board sees no reason to deviate from our traditional path. The Count has pledged to cover all eventual damage caused be, by the Great White Terror. So even in the case of the destruction of the entire cargo, the guild will suffer no mo monetary losses. There we go. So they knew about the beasts and um, they didn't care. Here's something, but it's no basilisk screech. Human voices. Huh. Is that them up there? What the hell is going on? Yamo, Ari, prepare the equipment. Beast wandered off somewheres. We got to lure it back. And who might you be? Um... Funny. About to ask you the same. They call us the Reavers. Reavers? Wouldn't happen to hail from Crinfrid, would you? Aye, we do. But how's it you know? And again, who the hell are you? <sighs> well... Geralt of Rivia. I'm a Witcher. Know your brethren in arms. Bohold, Kennet and Desbrit, new boy too. 
Ah, you're that witcher. I, Boho, mentioned you. Said you swing a mean sword. A professional? Good, you came along. Could take on the brute together. Talk is the venom something horrifying. Could use another pair of hands. Fee what we've gotten from the guild. We'll share it fair and square. You in? Gentlemen, this hurts my ears and pains my heart. Oh. You aim to kill your cast? It cannot be. The creature is protected. If you fear to lose the guild's reward, I shall repay it and reward you doubly to leave the beast be. You cannot slay the last living specimen of a near-extinct subspecies. Willing to pay, are you? Long as we do nothing. That's rather novel. What say you to that, master? Far uh, as I know, beasts culled the human race by five already. Well, to be fair... Basilisk lives for now. We're not gonna kill it. The victims were warned. Ever seen that, lads? You like them peaches? Ah, no scrapping with filth today, it seems. But, but, you made some mention of coin, as I recall. I did indeed. And the word once given. Your share, would ya? Oh. Thanks. <laughs> Easiest job I've ever done. Godspeed, Witcher. Strange working with you. Strange, but nice. Godspeed, boys. See you later. You spared your cust. I thank you. And be assured, I'll take great care she not dine on any other souls. Gotta try harder. Figure out a way to keep folk out of this area. That I shall do. Master, you must accept more. Be it a symbolic sum. Had you not come along, the reefers would surely have slain my Yokast. Hmm. That's all right. I got my share. Don't need any more. Rather, you paid it out to the families of your pet's victims. Noble of you, master. I shall take the advice to heart. Yokast has flown her nest. Hmm. Must have sensed a threat. Likely to return eventually, though. She'll return. Always does. I suspect I might even know where she's gone. I tracked her away and believe she might have found a new mate. It's an ordinary basilisk. Really? Not a silvery one. Mm. But something might come of it. Who knows? Your cast could lay new eggs. Perhaps produce an entirely new crossbreed. Sure, I hope not. Yeah. Take care. Help! Help us! Oh. Someone! The hell? What's this about? Monsters! Monsters there! In the cave! Oh, yeah? We managed to flee, but Hugo remains inside! Hugo? Our brother! He's still in there, inside! What? Help us find him! We'll pay you for your toil! Um... You post that notice about an escort? Yes, we did. And not without cause, it seems. We waited some days, yet when none answered, we risked the expedition unaccompanied. Fools we were. We'd have done better to show patience. Wait! Poor Hugo. Left to an unknown fate. Hmm. So, um... Noticed what attacked you? There was no time. We ran for the exit as soon as we felt the earth quiver. But Hugo, well, he went the other way. So, monsters crawl out of the ground? I... I suppose... In truth, I don't know. We just ran. Did not mm. look back. There's probably some centipedes in there. Giant ones. So... Why do you even go in there? We... Lost our way. Hmm. Mistake that cave for the high road. By the hair on my chinny chin chin, what difference does it make whether we went in for a stroll or to gather students? Hugo remains inside, in grave danger. That's what matters. Will you go in after him or not? Every second could be vital. 
Well, I could, for a price. I could look into it, but it'll cost you. How much would you take? How much w are you gonna give? Um, three fifty. A reasonable price. All right. You know what? I'm not gonna do it. <laughs> no, no, I'm gonna do it. Fine. I'll look for him. You two stay out here. <clears throat> Giant monsters, you say? All right. Should be a walk in the park. Hello? Kikimors. Not what I expected. Whew. Alright then. Um, probably should burn these eggs. Um, and, uh, look for our man Hugo. Oh, it's this. Fresh blood on the blade. Weapon was Hugo's, maybe. Nilf Guardian. Interesting. That could be a clue. Blood trail. Could be Hugo's wounded. That's another clue. Not a not a good one though. Oh. Blood hasn't even dried. Um what's this? Damp. Kikimores prefer cooler environments. Probably why they keep their distance. Okay. Uh Oh. Is that him? Hey, you're still alive. You, Hugo. Your brother sent me. Ja! Dizzards! Scoundrels! Tartmongers! They attacked me, but I fended them off. Uh. Now, they sent a brigand to finish the job. What? What's going on? What? What are you talking about? Ran into them outside, claimed monsters attacked. They ran, made it out, but you got stuck inside. They asked me to help you. Is that what they told you? The lying weasels. More trickery on their part, I'm certain. Whoa, slow down. What's this about? Uh, I'm Hugo Monar. My father, Victor Monar, you may have heard of. No. A cognac distiller he was, famed for it. Before he passed, my brothers and I would quarrel over who would inherit the family business. So father decided he would force us to work together. He broke his thing right. down into its parts. Three of them he hid, telling each of us the location of one. When my brothers learned my part, the last, was hidden in here, they decided they did not need me anymore. They decided to cut me out of the business. Literally. We argued, fought. The noise must have woken the beasts. My brothers ran for the mouth, while I ran deeper in. I see. Well? What about the missing part? Find it? No. I know only that it's in this cave, likely at the bottom of a pool. I feel awkward to ask, but as I am wounded, would you be kind and retrieve it? Uh... Sure, why not? Fine, I can do that. But you must know, I... I cannot pay you well. Figured as much. Start producing cognac, I'll come by for a discount. That, I promise you. Wait here. Alright. I'll be back. Damn, water's hot. Get burned if I don't watch it. Could use some protection. Maybe Quen will work. Oh uh, yeah. I don't see why not. Protected me from... <clears throat> Protected me from snow before. So. Alright. Into the depths we go. Um. Oh, that's it. Cool. Found the missing part. 
really hit that well, your father. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. Your pay. It is not much, I know. But I promise you good prices. The best once the tavern is open again. Hold you to that. Now let's go. Brothers are probably getting antsy. Wait, see there? My brothers. They've rounded up some thugs. They mean to attack me. Oh. We don't know that. Would you try to tell me it's a coincidence? That they return with an armed band? They've come for the last part of the still. They would kill me for it. Please, you may only hope. Kill them. Elsewise, uh. they'll kill me. Kill your brothers? You want that? Well, perhaps not them, but the other roughs, for certain. As to my brothers, I don't know. You couldn't perhaps render them harmless? Uh, will you defend me? Not until I know that you need defending. Not about to start cutting folk down because of a family squabble about some spare bit of machinery. We're going over there. And you're gonna settle this. Talk it out. But, should they attack, you will protect me, will you not? If they attack, unprovoked. Let's go. Come on. Kyoko! Are you well? We were worried! Why do I doubt this? Listen, while you were in there, we realized this Tiff is senseless, idiotic. You might have been harmed, gravely, and that's something we could never live down. Yushin is right. We must bury this hatchet, work together as father wished it. <sighs> if that's the case, then... Hmm. Claim to come in peace. But then who are these men? Hunters, who had made camp nearby. They spotted us and asked if we had no need for their aid. You went in, oh. gone a long time. With these men to help, we thought we might come to your rescue. I see. Well, that's good of you. All right, glad to see you've made up. Now I really need to get back to my own affairs. Naturally. Uh, your payment. We thank you for your help. Should you ever find yourself near the clever clogs, you must stop in. Superb, Cognac! Some of the best. Will do. So long. You, Jacob? Heal, Mohalt! Down! Who asks? A witcher? A witcher. Saw your notice. Hold up. A witcher, you say? That's like right. Louis Herrera's tales and fables. Uh. Luckier than a green bleeding leprechaun I am. See, uh. not a soul around believes this tree is Daphne, the cursed lady of legend. But you, you could lift the curse. Um, seriously? Bit too old to believe in bedtime stories, aren't you? Want your chops busted, Witcher? How old I am, that is none of your porking concern. Fair point. Not my business what you believe, either. Ha! Huh. I'm content we see eye to eye. So, um... So what makes you think there's a girl cursed inside the tree? Well, I came out with my dog, Moholt, to cut her down. Axe in hand, a broad swing I took. The edge burrowed deep in her trunk. And bum botch me if blood didn't spurt forth. My jaw dropped in the dirt. But right then I knew. Every jot of it in the tail of Daphne, Gareth, and the Witch of Lynx Craig. Don't tell me. From Herrera's tales and fables. You talking bet. Second edition. I meant it in Octavo. I know those tales by heart. My nan read them to put me to sleep. Guess she read it cover to cover, colophon included. So... 
got me curious, gotta admit. You really think the old tales are true? Taking the weepy, are you? Do you think me bore me? No, it's just these are dark, grim times. No room for nights pure of heart or happily ever afters. So I don't often run into folk like you. Yes, true, the times are crud, Pai. But I see this as all the more reason to remember the tales. My gran would say, if you know not what to do, think to the chessboard knight and noble Alondra, and the path they would choose. She schooled me so thorough in it, I could not do otherwise even if I wished to. I see. Let me take a look at the tree. Careful now. Alright. Don't worry about me, fella. Um swear I hear sobs in the rustling leaves. Actually does bleed. Looks like human blood too. And the bark resembles hypertrophic scars in places. Medallions humming like crazy. Intense magic at work here. Mmm. Blood. Seeped from the direction of the tree, judging by the shape of the stain. Interesting. Uh, is there more of it? There is. Or, what's this? Logger was making good time. Strange, though. Willow's isolated. No other trees near it. Hmm. What's going on here? And? Did you look at the tree close? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It actually does bleed. Pretty incredible. Looks wondrous. Did I not say so? Yeah, so. My help doesn't come free, you know. You speak to a lowly woodcutter. No stench of coin about me. Um. Do you have 110 crowns? Agreed. I will pay. As soon as the young mate is free. Good. Willing to help, but first I gotta figure out where to start. No need. I know it all. Miss Daphne and Sir Gareth shared a terrible and fearsome love for each other. Yet to prove himself worthy of her hint, Gareth was to face the Witch of Lynx Crag. Before Sir Gareth set off for the hill, Miss Daphne gave him her kerchief, a token of her favor. Let me guess, he never returned. He did not. She stood here, day upon day, night upon night, trying to spy him. Till she sprouted roots and turned into a tree? Wonder why. I will fecking tell you why. Uh. To await the moment when Gareth returns, kerchief in hand. That is the power of love. The power of longing. Must scale Lynx Craig. Oh. Search there for a means to free Daphne. I will give you my book of tales to refer to. And good luck, Witcher. Thanks. Um, uh, I'll see what I can do. Um, is it gonna pop up in the inventory or? No. Okay. I'm gonna have to look for it myself. <clears throat> so, Sir Gareth and Miss Daphne loved each other so much it hurt. To win the approval of his future father-in-law, Gareth had to perform seven challenges. The seventh was the hardest. Gareth had to go to Lynx Crag, find the witch who lives there, and convince her to lift the drought that plagued the whole land. Everyone, including Daphne, pleaded with Gareth to humble himself before the witch. You see, the witch from Lynx Crag was spiteful and headstrong, even f even for a witch, and only an act of true humility could break her icy heart. Interesting. Gareth, however, had no intention of bending his knee before a witch. Instead, he planned to force her to lift the curse. Nobody knows what happened on Lynx Crag, but Gareth never returned to his beloved. Daphne stood on the top of, the of a hill and looked for him day and night. Finally, she turned into a tree, so that she may live to see the return of her knight. Such was the strength of her longing and the power of love. Anyone who plunged his axe blade into that tree would see blood run from the wound. Folks started to avoid that place, leaving Daphne in peace to wait for Gareth. 
In time, all had forgotten about her. <sighs> Interesting. I wonder how much of that is true. Oh. Oh dear, what do we have here? Ow. That's enough of that. Get out of my face. Let me burn your eggs, too. While I'm at it. Damn Kikimores. Good for nothing. <sighs> Alright, though. Well, this was fun and all, but... I... Don't think the witch is here. Oh. Skeleton. Bits of some old armor. Wonder who it was. Hmm. Could this be Sir Gareth? The one from the stories. I mean, I suppose... Why wouldn't it be? If, if the legend is true, then... Well, that's just proof of it right there. Oh. Formula for pink dye. Sure, why not? Alright. As I recall, I was to scale Link's Crag, meaning I still got a still got a ways to go here. I still gotta climb. A hut. The witches. A hut. There we go. Oh. Hmm. Maybe I shouldn't be inhabited. Oh, no sign of the dweller though. Guess I'll look around. Interesting. Ghoul's blood. Warm. Smells inconclusive. No idea what ingredients are in there. Hmm. Um. Let's see. The transmutation of bodies is one of the most difficult tasks any mage can undertake. Indeed, only the true masters of the art have ever accomplished it, and even they have only perfected one of its forms. This difficulty arises from psychophysical limitations, since a mage can only safely transform into an animal with which he is perfectly attuned. A famous example is that of Ulf Blackbeard, who dwelled for years in a cave with a bear in order to imbibe the life essence of that animal. Interesting. Library of Onus. Conclave of Mages banned this tome. I then came to a place known as the Penath Valley, in a world known as Shagai. The mind of man cannot comprehend this land, where none, where non-geometric space and blasphemous colors lie, fly in the face of everything our eyes are accustomed to. In that instant, in the moment of my arrival, I teetered on the verge of madness. I shouted a noiseless cry in sweat, bloody sweat, when two suns rose above my head. I fell to my knees and prayed to Zothakoa, not for salvation, but for a quick death. And then they came. Fascinating stuff. Bones ground into dust. Eh, typical. Um... Remarks on the proper administration of yarrow. Notes on the use of yarrow stems. Interesting. Yarrow is first and foremost used for medicinal purposes. As mentioned above, when the leaves of this herb are placed against the flesh, they heal all kinds of trauma, wounds, and sores. Brew it, and the resulting tincture treats the common cold, colic, and loss of appetite. Yet, in addition to their healing properties, the branches of the Yara plant can be used for fortune-telling. This method of di divination might seem strange upon first glance, but is in truth simple and effective. It truly allows one to focus on the query at hand and gain an answer both accurate and satisfying. Interesting. What's this? Oh? Hmm. Well, well, well. A wall of spell enhancements. Or trophies. 
Interesting. So we got... Silk kerchief, monogrammed DF. Hmm. Could use it to break the curse if it's Daphne's. Yeah. None but feral cats stray in here most oft. Yet it oh. seems I've forgessed from afar at that. What do you seek in my home? Hello. I... Oh? Oh. Already found it. You do not aim to lift the curse from the tree, girl, do you? And if I do? What if I do? Then you had best know you waste your time. The old tales? Did your nan not tell them to you? Even I, the witch of Lynx Crag, would be hard-pressed to overcome the power of love and longing. Uh... Hold on a minute. The Lady's Knight. You ever make it here? Sagaras. Yes. He came to sway me, but had a quick change of heart. To be precise, it came after the first night we spent together. He stayed a fair while. Um. Then his conscience got the better of him, and he resolved to return to his beloved. Might have resolved to, but never made it. A tragic fate befell him along the way. You have anything to do with this turn of fate? Of course. Was I to let another woman have a man who belonged to me? <laughs> I could not abide it. I see. Um. Well. What if I asked you nicely to lift the curse, please? Gareth met the fate he deserved. And what happened to his wench was not my fault. All right, so you didn't cast the curse, but could you help lift it? I probably could, but why ever would I? Because, uh, because I'm asking nicely, please. I'll humble myself, prostrate myself before you like the Gareth of the Tale did. I beseech you to help me. Lift the curse that imprisoned Daphne in the tree. When I saw you enter my hut, I thought, now there is a fellow who shall bend his neck for no one. Yeah, Thank well. <clears throat> so. None, not even I can restore to the last the yes she has lost, can erase the suffering she has endured. Well. I cannot bring her back to life. But I shall tell you how you might let her depart in peace. Yet my aid shall have its price. A lock of your hair. Hmm. Uh. How can I know you won't use it to cast a spell on me? I require this. I must, for with it I will cast a spell to conceal me from you for all time, and will use it for nothing else. You will nag me never again. And you've nothing to fear, I assure you. I always keep my word. Alright, but just so you know, I have experience with witches. So you try anything funny, and I won't hesitate to put you down. I'll trust you against my better judgment. Lock of my hair's yours. Splendid. What do I need to do? You must convince the maiden her beloved yearned to return, but perished in the attempt. Take her silk kerchief and a fragment of Gareth's remains. His bones lie bleaching in the cave beneath this rock. Got a bone of his already. Yeah. That was taken as a professional precaution. Good. Fire must consume the kerchief and remains. And remember, your heart, your intentions must be pure. Clear? Yeah. Thanks sure. For your help. You're welcome. And adieu. 
Once you walk out that door, never shall we meet again. Fine by me. So? You met the witch. You must have. What did you learn? Couple of things. I can lift the curse, free her, by performing a ritual, making a sacrifice of her kerchief and Gareth's remains. But we gotta start at the right time. When the hour comes, I'll light four fires for the four winds, then begin the ritual. Fires? Then I shall be of use to you after all. Seems you need wood, much of it. Chop as much as you can. I'll see to the rest. I've chopped and stacked the wood. What now? Uh... My turn. Gotta light fires and talk to the woman enchanted in the tree. Yeah. No idea how this'll turn out. So just in case, stand at a distance. And if you see me draw my sword, run. All right. Uh... Southern fire. Look your last to the world's four winds. From the south, not a word. From the east, no cry is heard. From the north, silent sighs. From the west, peer hollow eyes. Cease your vigil. Dead he lies. Yeah. So, uh... Hear me, you who hide beneath this bark. The day of your freedom has come. Behold a kerchief, proof of your love for another. Behold, a bone of he to whom you offered your love. Gareth, my Gareth, he shall never return. No, he won't. Is his love for me gone? Did he stay true? Uh... No? Gareth broke his vow. Failed to stay faithful. Man is built of mud and filth, milady, And is like to blunder we all are. How cruel is the world to render conferring one's love so hard? But what would the world be without love? The time comes that I depart. I've waited too long. I've suffered too much. And now I wish to go. Farewell, milady. I thank you, stranger. And you, my knight. I thank you for speaking to me, for standing vigil at my feet. I did not think it would end this way. I hoped we could revive her, but I guess it was not to be. No. Well, hey. We did all we could. You did well. Here, your pay. And the book is yours as well. Thanks. Oh, thanks. Take care of yourself. So long, Witcher. I must think. Put this straight in my head. Yeah.